guys, note in this video, I know it's a very trying time for everyone. We are dealing with this coronavirus. We're not really sure what's gonna happen in the future. For me, doing makeup and having a little bit of fun helps take a little bit of the anxiety out of it. There's a lot in our media and our news feed right now about this. So hopefully this is just a welcome break from all of that. Watch this video grab some wine or whatever you're doing at home right now hopefully you're inside you're able to be inside and stay safe and keep on watching hey y'all so to get started, I want to show you all my prep this time before the primer because I that's going to kind of impact how I do this review. So first, I'm going to moisturize using the Clinique uh, ID moisturizer. Basically, you can go into Clinique and get a customized moisturizer based on your skin concerns. So my con skin concern is oily skin and dark marks. So that's like what my moisturizer is uh, dealt to treat. So after putting on moisturizer, I learned this technique from Jordan Liberty. He's a makeup artist. And basically, you're going to do your powder in your um, setting spray before you put any primer on. So I'm using the Fenty Pro Filter um, powder and I'm just using a brush to kind of put that all over the face. And then I'm gonna use a kind of weird, uh, a weird I don't wanna say weird, but unexpected setting spray. So this is from Milani and it's the dewy setting spray. I find that their other spreading joys are just a little bit too mattifying for me. And even though I have oily combination skin, this setting spray really works well for me. This is basically my prep before any primer goes on the face. So now we're going to apply the primer. So on one side, I'm going to apply the super group and on the other side, I'm going to apply my tried and true milk hydro group. So first we're going to put on the super group. So I've never really played with this. I've opened it to see what it looks like. It looks kind of, it has like a pearlescent um, kind of feel to it. It looks like it gives you kind of a natural glow with, from within look, but the good news is that it doesn't look like it's ashy so I'm putting it on just to see how it blends to the face it looks like it's blending in pretty well if anything it just gives you kind of a natural glow it's not giving you like flashback or kind of um, that like white cast that you sometimes get it looks like it's blending into the skin really well but it is giving off it's definitely giving off like a glow so I'm gonna put the hydro grip on the other side if you haven't used hydro grip before it's basically like a jelly a clear jelly and I like to just kind of dab it into the skin until it starts to feel tacky it's literally like um, a hydro like it grips like it's supposed to grip the makeup that's what it's designed to do and that's why I really like it so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and pat it in until I kind of feel it feeling tacky under my fingers and so that is kind of the finished look. You can see there's like a really intense glow going on and it could have something to do with the amount I put on, but I don't feel like I put on that much. I feel like I put on a pretty normal amount. So yeah. So next I'm gonna do color correcting. I'm using the Makeup Forever um, concealer. I'll have all the shade names and you know the links and everything in the description box below, but I like to color correct most days um, just to cancel any darkness. By the way, it's almost one o'clock. Just wanted to note the exact time the primer went on just for future reference. So next we're gonna do color correcting before foundation. I like to blend this out with my sponge. This is like one of the best color correctors that I've come across. It is a concealer technically, but like I just love the way that this concealer works in this particular shade is pretty perfect as a color corrector for deeper skin tones and doesn't really show through my foundation um because that's also an issue i know that people have sometimes too so you can still see the glow is coming through on the super group side i'm gonna make sure i remind y'all which side is which on the screen so <laughs> next is foundation finally so i'm just dotting on my um, stay naked foundation this is one of my tried and true foundations it's super mattifying but it has a really nice finish so i figured this would be a good one to test primer with because on a normal day this is a foundation that is going to last me all day so i just go ahead and put that on both sides of the face with um this is i think a morphe brush um, yeah, I think it's a Morphe brush, so I like to apply foundation with a brush these days and then go in with the sponge if I need more, like, blending. The glow is definitely coming through. I don't know if you guys can tell. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I can definitely see the glow is coming through. So, next we're going to do concealer. I'm using the new Pat McGrath, 
Blah, blah, blah. I'm using the new Pat McGrath Labs concealer and then a little bit of Fenty on top because the Fenty one's a little bit lighter and has a little bit more yellow undertones. This one is a little bit more orangey. I typically like concealers that have this kind of orangey to yellow tone, but I did want to do a little bit more brightening today. I kind of have kind of a avant-garde look on the eye, so I wanted kind of a bright under eye. And I'm also um, contouring with uh, the Maybelline Superstay Foundation Stick. I believe the shade that I use is Espresso. So these days I like to blend out my um, contour first and then blend my highlight into the contour. So using the same brush, kind of lazy. <laughs> you should probably be using different brushes for contouring than you did for foundation, but I just am just going to go ahead and use the brush I used to apply my foundation to apply my contour. I am bl blending it pretty high up, so it's not like I need it to be like super duper precise. Um, so yeah, just letting the concealer dry down a little bit before I start to blend it out with my sponge. This is one of my favorite sponges. It's from Dose of Colors. And they actually just came out with like new sponges with new shapes. So definitely check that out if you're in the market for a new makeup sponge. I just like it because it doesn't really... Um, doesn't product doesn't sink into it I guess it doesn't remove product from your face and it doesn't like absorb product when you're blending so to set the concealer I'm using the Beauty Bakery plantain powder um, with my sponge so if you all saw I just recently reviewed the Pat McGrath concealer and powder um, and I'll put the link to that video somewhere on the screen but what I found that I like to do now is use the plantain powder first because it's a little bit more yellow and then um, finish with the Pat McGrath powder because the Pat McGrath powder is super blurring but it does have like a I don't want to call it like a pearl finish it has like a like a I don't know what it's like a satin finish like it's not mattifying so I like to kind of finish with that as opposed to set with that initially and I find that works best for me <laughs> don't get it in here don't get it all up in your grill like I just did but yeah and also I would suggest applying it with a brush versus a sponge. Next, I'm going into bronzer. This is a cream bronzer from Huda Beauty and I'm just tapping it onto the skin with, this is a MAC brush. Uh, if you're interested, let me leave me a comment. I'll give you the exact number. <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah. So I like to just kind of press that into the skin. And then I'm gonna use Fenty Beauty. Um, Oh my gosh, what's the name of this bronzer? Y'all know the name of this bronzer. <laughs> I'll put the name of it in the description, but you know, the darkest Fenty Beauty bronzer. I can't believe I'm blanking on the name, but y'all see it there. So I'm applying that on top of the cream bronzer. Next, this is a new blush from, I guess it's KVD Vegan now. Uh, I had to give them a try since they rebranded. This is the shade Poppy. I really actually love this blush, especially for spring. It's kind of bright, but blush is um, something that fades first throughout the day so as the day goes on it's not gonna look like this bright and I wasn't really feeling like doing highlighter so that's kind of the end of my makeup routine I'm just using the kabuki brush there's nothing on it I just wanted to kind of brush off anything that's excess on my face and that's kind of the finished look so it's now one o'clock and um, there's not really a huge difference. The side with the Super Good Primer has just a touch more radiance than the side with my Milk Makeup Primer. Um, so far, it's not really an issue. We will see how it progresses. So let's stay tuned. So it's been about an hour. I went off camera to do some other tutorials. So it's like two o'clock now. And we're starting to see a little bit of that glow come through on the Super Group side compared to the Milk Makeup side. So we'll see if this progresses, if they even out. We're gonna do hourly updates. Um, so hour number three, we are starting to see the Super Group side break down just a touch. Um, it's not super noticeable compared to the Milk Hydro Grip side, but I can definitely kind of tell that there is more oil coming through on the Super Group side. We are now in hour four, and um, again, it's kind of just more of the same. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I just look more radiant on the Super Group side. So yeah, I mean, there's nothing really more to say about that. It's not a super terrible thing, but if I'm comparing it to my you know, my um, tried and true Hydro Grip, it is uh, breaking down a little bit faster. Hopefully y'all can hear me. I'm outside because I just wanted to look at the makeup and natural lighting. The difference is a lot more apparent. You can see that 
the side of my face is a lot more um, radiant <laughs> than this side. But what I realized in doing this review is that I forgot to add the sunscreen that I would normally add on this side in place of the non-SPF um, primer. So this is the sunscreen that I use. This is Drunk Elephant. Uh, don't focus. Drunk Elephant's primer, I mean, Drunk Elephant's SPF. So I want you all to see my routine and like, I don't wanna lose this footage. Um, or like, you know, the hourly updates or whatever. So I'm going to do the same routine tomorrow, add the primer and just give you guys a before and after, after a few hours. All right, my bad y'all. So we're going to just go through this routine again. This is me from the future, kind of, I guess, technically in this video. So I want to just show you the order of the way I do things. So my normal routine, I apply my moisturizer and then I apply my sunscreen. So I showed you the drunk elephant one. It does kind of leave a small, slight cast, but because I put makeup over it, you can't really tell. So I'm going to do the Powder, and I'm gonna do the spray and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the primer so again I'm gonna do the super group on one side the side that I didn't apply um, SPF to and then the hydro grip on the side that I did apply SPF to so this is what I would do on a normal day when I remember to put SPF on um, again the drunk elephant one it's not like it does have a slight cast but I like to wear it with makeup because it doesn't really affect the way the wear of my makeup so I'm gonna put the foundation on and just go through that whole thing that I just showed y'all, but just wanted to show you kind of what everything looks like when I'm doing the sunscreen. So on this day, I started my makeup, uh, I put it on at 12.30, so this is my full look. Again, after the makeup is on, you can't really see a difference. Um, by the time I finish my makeup, is about one o'clock, but at the end of the day, around almost six o'clock, same result. Um, a little just a little bit more oily on the super group side than I am on the hydro group side so that's why I like that SPF because it doesn't really change the outcome of the wear of my makeup and that info will, that info will be down below but so far I feel like it's a good primer but it's not gonna replace my normal routine even when I use my SPF I still feel like um, I get similar results. So uh, the final verdict on this primer, is it a primer that works for deeper skin tones? Yes, I had no issues with it in terms of like getting flashback. Wow, it's raining. Well, we're just gonna wrap this up before I get wet. So no flashback um, can be used for darker skin tones. It's not terrible, like this is not bad for four or five hours. Um, I hope I, did I show you guys the time? 5.16, by the way. So this is not bad for like four to five hours, but it's just not as good as the Milk um, Hydro Grip. Uh, so I think I would recommend this primer to people that have more of the combination dry versus combination oily, even though, and I also did that uh, method that I showed y'all earlier with the powder and the spray. So even with all that, I still am getting this dewiness. So, Definitely would recommend it to people with deeper skin, but only if you have normal to drier skin um, and you don't like this primer. <laughs> but just because I love this primer, obviously you can see it really works well for me. It's still going strong while this one is starting to break down. So that is my final review. We'll see if my thoughts um, change tomorrow. Um, if they don't, I'm going to keep this part in. <laughs> uh, so thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you tried this primer in the comments down below. Like I said, I know we are all going through a moment right now where we are very uncertain about what's going to happen. So sometimes makeup can just take a teensy bit of pressure off of you know the unknown um so stay strong stay safe stay inside um thanks again for hanging out with me today and i'll see you in the next video